Welcome to part three of my Mocha Pot woodblock print series. Now that the blocks are all carved, I'm gonna be making my own pigment from coffee brewed directly from my own Mocha Pot. I'll also share some design updates that I've made since the last videos. Please enjoy. To start, I needed to do some research on creating natural pigments, or more specifically, a coffee-based pigment. To my surprise, I actually found some info on the National Park Service website. It turned out to be pretty much just coffee, just, <laughs> just paint with coffee or make ink with coffee. So um, my idea to start was to brew some nice coffee in my mocha pot, like I love to do in the morning, and then condense it for some really deep color. Because with woodblock printmaking, you typically want to use some very saturated pigments. Now, I want to show you my actual process of making coffee, because it's something that I really love. But I'm going to start off by showing a little bit about the redesign that I've done, um, because some of it is relevant with the colors I'll be using. To start, you'll see I removed the mocha pot text from the corner. I just thought that it made the design a little cluttered. I also changed the background to a color that I can also make with the coffee pigment I'm working on. So you'll see there I, I'm playing around with it. Um, it's, it's hard to have an idea of what exactly, which color represents exactly um, what will come out of my coffee maker. Um, so I'm kind of just playing around with it. And I also noticed that the original color I represented there on the left was a very reddish brown, which I felt like wasn't too accurate. So I tried to kind of simulate more of what I would think it looks like. Also, I wanted to create a little more interest in the design, so I decided to add a bokashi, or a gradient, to this print. So my plan was to use one on both the top and the bottom, so you'll see I'm kind of playing around with both of those here for a bit, um, until I find, you know, what distance and um, just what gives it the right balance. I often make design edits as I'm working on the project because it takes so long, so while I'm carving I'm kind of getting inspired lots of times. And in this case, I really like where the design was taken. I love the new design and not a huge fan of the, the old colors in hindsight. Um, I just think the blue maybe didn't fit as well as I originally thought, so I'm very happy with that. This is the design I'll now be working from. Now I want to show a little bit of my coffee process, and I'm sorry if this is cheesy, but I guess I'm a little romantic about this routine I do in the morning, so I hope you enjoy some of this. I like to grind my beans each time before I make the coffee, so I bought a little hand grinder that I always use in the morning. I can grind up the exact amount of beans that I use in my mocha pot every time. I'm also not sure if it makes a big difference, but I heard online that you should use hot water, um, or start with hot water in the mocha pot. So I just get my sink to the hottest temperature I can. I then pour the beans into this filter here. The way a mocha pot works is that vapor pressure in the bottom chamber pushes hot water upwards through the beans. It then ends up in this top container here where it collects. So I set it on the stove. Again, another tip I heard is to use low temperature or um, low stove temperature to brew the coffee. So I always start low and then wait till the brew starts coming out. And once it starts brewing, I'm really making sure that I don't let it overbrew. So I make sure to turn off the heat right when the coffee starts sputtering. Um, you can see right here, it's very close. And then right when it gets to this point, I need to take it off and cool it down. Once the coffee's been brewed, I wanted to concentrate it, like I mentioned earlier. So I poured it into a hot pot on the stove. You can see I poured it in when it was way too hot. Um, I won't be making any cooking videos soon, but the general idea was to just let the water evaporate out and have a darker brown substance to use. So I let that sit for a while, um, kind of keeping an eye on it carefully, as you can see, and made my whole house smell very good. Um, and so then once it was ready, I set it aside and let it cool for a little bit. 
Another thing I read online was that cold brew coffee is actually less acidic um, than something brewed hot. So down the road, this might be something that I would try because um, generally I was a little worried about the acidity with coffee mixing with paper um, because I know that's not a great idea, but um, I wanted to do it for this print because it's kind of fun. So I transferred it straight into that little pigment dish there that I'll be using. Um, that way I don't have to transfer it when I'm ready to print and put some saran wrap to prevent it to evaporate further so that I could store it in my fridge and let it cool down over a day or two. So once I was done making the coffee pigment, I was super curious to find out if it would work well for woodblock printing or not. So I decided to make some test prints and I'll share that with you now. To start, I cut some sheets to size for this print. So I, I think I just cut like eight sheets um, because I wasn't trying to make a full batch. I just wanted to see how the pigment worked and if I needed to change plans or not. So I got those sheets all ready. Um, as a side note, I always like to measure out exactly what size my prints need to be and record that so that in the future it's easy to cut to size. Next, I got all set up like I normally would for printing. So I wanted to treat this like a real print run um, because I wanted to compare it to what would have happened with my normal watercolor pigments. Um, here's something that I like to do when I set up that I thought I'd show was um, putting some camellia oil on the back of my barren. That oil will help keep the, the bamboo sheath on that barren healthy and make it last a little bit longer keeps it kind of um, pliable and malleable. Also, it reduces the friction when you're rubbing the back of the paper, so it makes it way easier to print with. I did moisten my paper for these trials, and that's something that I'll show you in a little more detail next video. Here's me getting the block wet before printing. Um, it's always important to kind of prepare the block by soaking it in water for, for a few minutes at least, and then I also like to saturate it with pigment and let it kind of sit and absorb all those things a little bit to get it ready. Once I'm getting closer, I start adding some rice paste, um, maybe a little more pigment, and then I'm finally ready to take the first sheet. Um, usually I print with that wax paper in between the paper, um, the printing paper and the barren. Uh, that just also protects both the paper um, and helps the barren slide a little bit easier. I was really happy with the first impression and I didn't feel like there was a big difference between my normal watercolor pigments and the coffee pigments. I'll be testing all the impressions that I designed at the beginning of this video with the gradient and also the coffee at the center of the mocha pot. So for each impression, I'll go through one time in real-time motion and then do that kind of time-lapse view like I just showed. Next was the gradation from both the top and the bottom of the print. You can see that this bokashi is made on the same uh, surface as the flat impression. It really helps um, to do this because then you, you know, you, I only had to carve one surface and I get a much more complicated um, and interesting background. Sometimes I do carve these areas separately, but this time I didn't have enough room on the block, so there was no decision to be made. You'll see sometimes I give the paper a tap with the baron before adding the wax paper. This just helps it stick to the block. I don't have to use as much pressure as the first impression because I've found that when you've already printed the same area, it kind of is, it's able to um, transfer to the paper easier. And I, it's a hard, I have a hard time describing this, but um, something about that first impression kind of primes the surface of the paper um, for subsequent impressions, especially in this case, because it's overlapping the same exact area. So I feel good about that. Again, I had to do this impression twice um, because I wanted a more bold uh, gradation from the, both the top and the bottom. If you're wondering about the Ziploc bags, those are what I use to maintain the moisture level of the paper. A big um, difficulty with Japanese woodblock printmaking is that there's a balance of moisture you're trying to maintain with that paper. You want it to be a very consistent level of moisture throughout the paper 
and also a very specific amount of moisture. So it's kind of a game to balance that as you go because each impression also adds water to the paper, um, but they also dry out as you're printing with them and leaving them open to the air. So that kind of helps retain the moisture and helps with that balance. The last impression is a darker impression for the coffee that's in the pot. Now I wanted to create a darker color um, and to achieve this, I just layered two impressions in a row on top of each other, which were already on top of that base layer because I included that section in the background color. So that would mean that in this case, I've actually had four total layers of coffee uh, to create that color. However, I think in the future, I will try some more experiments in other prototypes um, where I'm creating a actual darker pigment of the coffee, like maybe I'll add sumi ink to it to achieve that, and then I'll have to, then I'll be able to do less impressions for the same result, or at least a similar result. Just as a reminder, this is the design that I'm working towards, and I'm actually really happy with where this testing is going. Again, this is just a trial to see how the coffee pigment works and make sure that it will be possible to do this. Um, and at this point, I'm very confident in the ability of that pigment to work. So I'm really just kind of trying to make it match the design now. And you can see this is the finished result of all the coffee layers of this print. And I'm really happy with how they turned out. One aspect that might have been a little different was it seemed like the pigments might have bled a little bit more. Um, and I also will confirm they do smell like coffee after printing, which is kind of a cool side effect, I would say. Again, I'm really happy with how this testing went, and I'm surprised to say that it pretty much acted exactly like the watercolor that I normally use. Um, so I'm, I'm surprised and I'm excited to see what the finished print looks like with every layer. Thank you so much for continuing to follow this series. Next time, I'll be making some prototype prints and then finally make the finished product. I can't wait to share that with you soon.